What's up guys, welcome to my full solo cash cup guide. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about everything to do with solo cash cups, whether it be mentality, format, when to W key, when to not, and more. Before we hop into it, please consider using code JIVENTV in the Fortnite item shop. And just to let you know, I stream all of the solo cash cups on my Twitch, JIVENTV. So definitely stop by sometime. Without further ado, let's get into this video. So first thing I wanna talk about in this video is the format. The format is very placement based. There are 30 points that you can get just from playing out placement rather than going for kills. And on the other side, there's only one point per kill. So basically what this means is that you shouldn't really be taking fights for the most part. There are certain times that you should, but a lot of people have this in their mind that let's say you're in the top 3% and you want to get to the top 1%. Oh, you might want to W key a little bit. Like if you're not top 25 or top 100, you need the W key to get there. Not true at all. The only time you should W key is if you're way, way behind on points. So let's say you're like top 30% and you usually place in top 5%. That means you're probably in the lobbies where you might be able to W key and get away with it. The thing is, solo cash cups are only open to champs players. So you gotta really know where you're at on the leaderboard before you decide to W key everybody around you. One thing you'll learn if you try to W key every single game, you'll learn that no matter how good your fighting is, W King is going to ruin your tournament simply because players are so good at fighting nowadays that you may take a fight against a player that you're better than, but they may be good enough to make the fight last five minutes, grief all your mats, all your heals, and leave you absolutely shambles for the rest of the game, all for one point when you could have gotten 30 for the dub. So this is how I recommend playing. First game, always go for some W King. Don't just W key brainlessly every person you see, take smart fights, maybe rotate to the dead side of zone where the least amount of players are, and take fights over there. That way you don't have to worry as much about third parties. And another thing is you don't need to hot drop this first game. Just go to where you're most comfortable, where you practice, and then once you get your loot up, then try W keying. It's good to try to make every game count because you only have 10 in three hours. So if you die off rip three games, you're not really gonna have any games to spare. So when I say W key first game, go for like 10 kills. That's a solid first game, especially if you get the dub. That'll put you probably around top 100. But from there on out, play placement. After that first game, cut off the W king and play placement. Let's say you die off rip your first game though, and you only got like two points or something. If you're really confident in your fighting, then go for it again. 100%, I would. But if you're not confident in your fighting at all, then you might just wanna play out for the placement for the rest of the tourney. That way you don't lose any extra games. Now the only other time you should W key is if there's like 20 minutes left and you still have like three games. The biggest thing I try to do is calculate how long each game is gonna take and how much time is left in the tournament. This is something that you kind of learn over time, but it's good to know. So let's say there's 30 minutes left in the tournament. That gives you time for two full games. So usually what I do is instead of W keying two games, I'll play two full games out and just lose that one extra game. Just forget about it. It doesn't matter if you get through all of your games. What matters is you make the most with the time you have. So you have 30 minutes left in the tourney. You're going to want to play two full games out because that has much more potential than W King 2 and playing one full stacked game out. The last game is always going to be stacked. But on the other side, if you have 20 minutes left, you only have time for one full game because the game takes 25 minutes. So in that case, if you have 20 minutes, three games, then you might want to W key one and try to play one out full. I usually like to have one extra game in the bag at the very end of the tourney, just in case I die off spawn. That way you can re queue in for another chance. So that's typically how it goes. W key first game, play placement the rest of the tourney, and then maybe you can W key another game at the end, but figure out how much time you have, just like I just talked about. Another thing you need to keep in mind is understanding your elo. What this means is understanding the skill level of the lobby you're going into. Like if you're going into the highest skill lobby, your top 100 in the tournament, you definitely need to avoid fights. I try to stay clear of people. I usually get a car for my mid game rotates and rotate far into zone. Like by the time first zone finishes closing and second zone opens, I wanna be center of second zone already. So I try to predict where the second zone is gonna pull, get to the center of where I think that zone is before the second zone even shows itself. 
That way you're in a good position and you can start looking for storm surge tags on people rotating in. People always ask in my solo cash cup videos how I make it to endgame so often, and that is how. Loop fast and rotate with the car. And I predict zones based off the first zone pull. If the first zone pulls all the way to the north, I predict it's going to go far to the north again. Same with west, east, and south. And then if it pulls to the center, usually I try to play on the outside of the zone because I don't want to be stuck in the center of the map because that's where all the W keys go. So if it pulls far in one direction, I'll get all the way to that direction. Far north, I go far north. But if it pulls center, I just play on the edge and have a car ready to go and zoom to the center of the map. Just don't forget to look for storm surge tags no matter where you set up. So that's how I basically go about playing a cash cup, but there's other things I wanted to talk about in this video. First thing I wanna talk about is mentality. A lot of people tell me that they have trouble keeping their cool in a solo cash cup, whether it be they're getting nervous or they're raging. And I know solo cash cups can be really irritating, but the way I look at it is it's not that big of a deal. Whatever happens, happens. One good thing to know to keep your calm is that you're gonna have bad weeks. Every single pro player that places in the tourney has tons of bad weeks, even the top performers that place all the time. If you go to look at their recent tournaments, it'll be first place one week, and then the next week will be like 7,000th place. As soon as I saw that, a couple things clicked. First of all, one thing that clicked was I need to be taking risks in solo cash cups, because clearly they do, and that's how they get first in the tourney. What I mean by taking risks is going for refreshes in late game when you see the opportunity instead of hesitating and saying, nah, I'm good with what I have right now. And then you run out of mats a second later and taking more fights in your first game. One of the big reasons these top performers will place first one week and 7,000th the next is simply because they'll either have a good W key game or a bad one. If they have a bad one, they're not gonna place too hot but it was worth the risk because they're going for the money. And without that big W key game to start it off, they're gonna be down bad. But they still take that risk every week because that's how you place at the top. So the main moral of this story is don't worry about your placement, just do the best you can and try to learn from it no matter what happens. If you have a bad week W keying, then maybe you should put more time towards fighting that next week and VOD review the fights that you lost in the actual cash cup. See what went wrong, how you could have pushed differently, Learning how to play solo cash cups is a long process. It may take you a year, it may take you a couple months, everybody's different. But I've been trying to place in them for so long and I'm just now getting to the place where I'm actually happy with how I've been performing. Main point is keep your head up. Know that if you're having a bad week, you're not the only one. There's several pros out there placing in the 10 thousandths right now, you know what I mean? And last thing, a really good way to improve, and I say this all the time in my cash cup videos, VOD review top placing pros every week. Every week I just search on YouTube, first place solo cash cup, and I try to find top placers and VOD review their games, how they did it, and learn some stuff and get motivated for the cash cup the next week. Usually the night before I'll watch one and wake up feeling so ready. Also, if you're really serious about it, get a notebook while you're watching it. It helps out a ton. Anyways, guys, don't forget, I'll be streaming the Solo Cash Cup on Twitch, Jivin TV. Don't forget to hit that like button, sub if you're new. Use code JiveNTV in the item shop, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.